Hello, everyone. My name is Hal. This is Quail Studios Guitar. We are going to start today with something that I haven't done for a while. Let's see. Let me turn on Tommy Emmanuel, and that's what you were hearing right at the beginning of this. Tommy Emmanuel. How many people know Tommy Emmanuel? How many people like him? This is amazing. Say, what we're going to do today is we are going to look at different guitar players because one of the things that we need to do as guitar players is we need to learn how to hold our instruments. And one of the reasons we do that is because we need to understand how to play it well. For instance, if we do bar chords, if we play bar chords, right? Where do we hold the guitar? Do we hold it up high? Do we hold it down low? This is important because when we play the guitar, we can play it with a pick, true. We can play it with our fingers. We can play classical guitar as an example. Classic gu classical guitar would be if it's between your legs, and we're going to talk about that. So we're going to look at some different guitar players and talk about what we do as guitar players, because this, this is really, really important. Tommy, here we go. One thing I want you to look at really closely, I want you to see exactly how does he hold the guitar? Where does he hold the guitar? Is this the style of guitar that you want to be able to play? So what you want to do is, if you like certain uh, artists, you like certain guitar players or certain styles, then you look at the artists or the styles. Some people may even say, hey, I need a guitar like him so I can sound like him. And that's part of it, yes. But also, how you hold the guitar is very important. Look at Tommy Emmanuel. He's got this uh, thing going on where his hand is really relaxed. His right hand is relaxed. He's got a, a finger pick, a thumb pick, actually, I guess you could call it. And then he's using his fingers on the rest of his guitar. Let's keep going. Here's the melody to Over the Rainbow. Now right here, you'll notice that he's got a little bit of tension in his shoulders. I like to really be as relaxed as I can. This is very important. Also, you know, you, you can't be totally relaxed or you can't play anything. But look at his right hand. It's very, very relaxed. And then he's using different uh, styles. You know, he's using, the, he's doing some palm muting and that kind of thing. And he also did, uh, right there at the beginning, he had... Uh, harmonics, which was really important. Let's go to another guitar player. Cat Stevens. Cat Stevens was really, for me, I listened to a lot of Cat Stevens, and I love Cat Stevens. I loved his vocal because his vocal kind of fit my voice, and his guitar playing wasn't too crazy, and so I kind of liked that for as a beginning guitar player. Now what's interesting about Cat Stevens here he is right here. Let me turn my camera back on so you can see me. He's playing Wild World in concert here. Mm -hmm. What does that say on the screen? Let's see what it says. 1971. So here he is, 1971. He's actually got a bass player there on his right-hand side. Mm -hmm. There's also another guitar player playing some of the intricacies of what he does on Wild World. So he's really just strumming and singing. We can see how he's got his guitar. It's down a little bit. Whenever I looked at Cat Stevens, actually I didn't look at Cat Stevens when I was growing up because we didn't have the internet and uh, we didn't have videos like you do today. I mean, if you want to see an artist, all you got to do is go to his YouTube and, you know, type it in and there you can see them. We had to go to a concert or we had to watch them on TV. Those were the options that we had. We didn't have videotapes or anything at that time either. So uh, it was kind of interesting. Let's go to someone else here. Oh, we got the Beatles. Here's somebody. So when we watch the Beatles here, you can see John is holding his guitar pretty high. I'm kind of amazed at how high it is. He's got that Epiphone guitar. It's, it's very high up. 
like that. Paul, now I'm talking about Paul because Paul is a bass player and a guitar player, and he's got that bass a little bit more comfortably. Let's go on and look at George. You can see uh, George's guitar there, a little lower than John's guitar, but during this time, what happened is that you didn't really have that, you know, really dropped look. The, it was okay if the guitars were higher and they were, uh, you know, looking that way. Let's go on to another one. Oh, here's Anna Vidovic, Vidovic, whatever her name is. She's a classical guitar player. You can see right there, she got her knee up on the left-hand side, and she's got her guitar like this, and the guitar is actually between her legs. This is a classical guitar. Let's see. Let's listen to a little bit. See what her positioning is. What's nice about classical guitar players is that in this position, the left hand can do bar chords really well. And also, you know, when we looked at John's guitar, his, his guitar was quite high, just like that. Very accessible to the left hand. Coming around this way, a classical guitar player has a very relaxed wrist and they can be very, very, very amazing. All right, let's go on to somebody else. Oh, Brian Aker. Brandon, excuse me, Brandon Aker. Or Acker. He's, replay he's playing Recuerdos de la Alhambra by Francisco Tarrega. And uh, he's also a classical guitar player. I studied classical guitar for about a year and learn how to do this. Not this particular piece at that time. Right here, let's look at what he's got. He's got a stand right here that's on his guitar. He does not have his left leg up like uh, Anna Vidovic had. And so you can see his, his right hand over here. It's very relaxed. His left hand, I love that arm position. This is a very uh, demanding piece that he's playing. I think those are triplets. It's like the melody is being played by those notes. Oh, yes. Th I love uh, this particular piece. Let's see. Who is your favorite guitar player, by the way? I'm going to throw out a whole bunch here. I'd like to know in the comments, you can tell me who your favorite guitar player is. This is Dominic Miller. Now, I don't know if you know Dominic Miller, but he played with Sting. He still plays with Sting, I believe. And I didn't realize that that's who it was that was playing with Sting all that time. Not in the police, but just Sting. He helped to write Shape of My Heart, and that's what he's playing here. Let's listen to a little bit of it and watch him. He's actually playing with his right leg up like this. So you can see that's how he's holding his guitar. But it's a classical guitar, and it's a little bit smaller than a regular classical like Brian Aker had or Anna Vidovic. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> So this is the introduction to the song. You can kind of see um, his hand position and what he's doing there. You can see his whole body. I love watching videos like this because you get to do that. See what he's doing there? He's playing the melody to this song. And what he's using is something called a rest stroke. And so what he's doing is he's plucking the string like that and then resting on the string above it. And it gives a different sound. It actually is a little bit stronger and it, a little bit darker sound. So he's using a very relaxed hand position. I love his hand position. It's one of the reasons he's one of my favorite guitar playing people. He doesn't really use his fingernails. He's using his fingers. And so it has a little bit of a darker sound. So you can see right here, there we go. In the description of this video, I have all of the links to all of these videos. Uh -huh. Now here's Eddie Van Halen, okay? Eddie Van Halen is amazing, right? So I don't know where he was, but I have the link in the description if you want to go look at the whole video. Okay, so he's got his hand up in the air, in the air and I'm going... So, so basically, I just moved the 
Yeah. Sorry, that was a little loud. Now you can see his positioning and everything. That's one thing I love about videos like this. You can actually see what's going on with a guitar player, your favorite guitar player. And you can see exactly what kind of uh, technique they're using. If we back that up just a little bit, we can see, you can see how his thumb is on the top of the neck like this and how what he's doing. He's also got his pinky underneath too uh, in that other uh, view that we had. You can see what's going on. And then on his right hand, you can see where his positioning is. Uh, this is a fantastic era to uh, be grown up in. Because we have all of these tools, we can look at our favorite guitar players. Okay, so we're going to go out of this and go Greetings into somebody one else. And all. This is Guthrie Govan here, and welcome to my exciting new column about string bending. So he did this column with the guitarist, with guitarist about string bending, and uh, I love Guthrie Govan. He's amazing. My, they can't do it at all. His English humor is just cracks me up. It's just amazing. Actually, you can explore. Um, so the, the dull version of the lick might be something like... So now we can see... So you can see his hand position. It's interesting because his hand is a little bit compressed right there. Uh, I would call it a little bit tense, but he's such an amazing guitar player. I'm not going to... I'm not going to chastise him for anything like that. Well, let's listen to what he does with that lick. Clearly, I don't have the blues. But now, uh, same thing, but... <laughs> Um, to me, that sounds a lot more like the real thing, even though that's not a real note. You can't find it on the piano keyboard. It doesn't exist. It's hiding between a white key and the black key next door. Yep, I love it. Okay. This is Jaco Pastorius. I put him in because I like to look at bass players too. They're amazing, right? Especially Jaco plays a fretless bass. Jeff Beck, okay, so in a video like this, you can see what Jeff Beck is doing. He has such a right, relaxed right hand. Very different positioning. Um, a lot lower than some of the other guitarists that we've talked about so far. We're gonna go to the next one here. Mike Dawes. Somebody that I used to know. This is an amazing recording of somebody that I used to know. If you don't have headphones, you're not going to be able to hear his bass notes on this particular one. Six string guitar, I think it's drop D tuning, and he's using a lot of uh, different techniques to play this song. Now, I don't really like that that compressed, you know, like with the the wrist down like this, but he's amazing. He gets some amazing tones out of it. Uh, personally, I use my wrist up a lot. If you've seen some of my videos about finger picking. He plays a little more tension than I love, but I can't. There he goes, harmonics and all that kind of stuff. Here comes a bass note. Ooh, that's amazing. This is not an overdubbed video. This is all live. Okay, so. Paola Requena, classical guitar player. Love classical guitar players. Now this one, this is uh, Paola Requena also. So you can see exactly what she's doing and how she's holding the guitar. Classical guitar players, she's got her left foot on a stool, left foot up, and then right here, you know, that positioning. It's really great. You'll also see jazz players playing in that position, but with a strap. Okay, let's keep going. And like this, um, Pat Metheny, when he's playing, now this is in his younger days, this is back in the 70s. See how high that, that guitar neck is? Now he's he's holding his pick he's holding his pick uh like this, something like that, and I don't really like that particularly. I like a more of an open hand, but 
He's amazing. He's really fast. So maybe that's the secret to finger to fast picking on that. This is Pepe Romero. He's from Spain. When I first started studying classical guitar, I learned from Pepe and his style and his technique. <laughs> Now, he, he's a different classical guitar player because he actually bends over his guitar more than some of the other ones that are sitting up straight. And you'll see a full body shot here in just a second. Now, look at his right hand. It's just so relaxed. See that? He's right, right over the guitar. Most classical guitar players aren't playing like that. I'm going to turn that down just a little bit. <laughs> All kinds of different ages looking at him. This is Pepe Romero again playing La Paloma, his dad's favorite piece. You can see the stool on the left-hand side on his left foot, and uh, he's got his guitar in that position. It's, you know, he's using that rest stroke again right there to play those melody, and those are free strokes. Palm muting right there, yeah. All right, this is one of my favorite rock guitar players. His name is Steve Morris. And uh, he played, uh, Steve is, is amazing. He played with uh, Kansas in the like mid to late 80s, did two albums with him. One was, the first one was uh, Power. I, that's my favorite album that he did with them. Uh, he's just a, a tasty electric guitar player, rock guitar player. Here's another Steve. This is Steve Vai. Steve Vai started his career with uh, Frank Zappa. And he's just uh, a virtuoso guitar player, just amazing too. Now he's actually got a pick, but he's, he's using his fingers right now. I think he's, he's holding it right in here somewhere. There he's using his pick. So, you can watch his, he's got really big hands, it looks like. It's just amazing. That's a Ibanez guitar, one of his signature guitar. Another classical guitar player, Tatiana. This is Tatiana Reshkova or something like that. One thing I love about this particular shot right here is that you can see her right hand and what she's doing. This is John Mayer's teacher, Tomo Fuchita, Fuchita, <laughs> if I'm saying that right. Okay, let's keep going. Tomo does a lot of short videos. This is probably like uh, a minute and a half or something like that. And he just shows you certain kinds of things. He does longer videos too, uh, tutorials. But I love to watch him and uh, listen to him play. There he is again. Tomo Fujita. Fujita. This is Troy Grady. If you don't know Troy, uh, he's got a channel on YouTube. And that red thing on his guitar right there has a cell phone. And so that's what's taking pictures of his hand when you're looking at it. Uh, that right, on the right side of the screen there, you can see what he's doing. So this is, uh, he has uh, some really great videos about how to pick really fast.
And then what he does is he slows them down so you can see exactly what he's doing and he explains everything. Exactly the technique that you need to use. He talks about the picks that you need to use for this kind of playing. And so I love looking at uh, this kind of thing. I'm not really in love with that style of playing so much, so I don't do it very much. Eric Johnson. Got to have Eric Johnson, right? So these guitar players are not in any order. I didn't put them in, in, in like, these are my favorites or something like that. So this is called Midnight Special. This was back in the 70s. And... Uh, Do you feel like I do or something like that? This is him back in the early 70s. And this is Peter Frampton <laughs> a lot later in the 2000s. Uh, you can go check him out. But what I, one thing I love about this is that just a little bit later on, he goes into a lead that is really not in the actual song. Let's see if I can find it. So here is Alan Holdsworth. I met Alan back in 1984 at the NAMM show in Anaheim. <laughs> Alan is amazing. He really is. It was a jaw-dropping performance. I was about 10 feet from him, and it was for about an hour. Uh, I have one album by uh, Alan Holdsworth. It's called Atavacron, and uh, I, I don't really love his music that much. It's mostly jazz fusion, but he's just an amazing guitar player, and it's fun to watch him. All right, last guitar player, Joe Pass. This is a jazz standard called Ain't Misbehaving. M Ain't Misbehaving. <laughs> Joe Pass is amazing. Uh, maybe I like him because he doesn't have any hair, you know, I, that's why I wear a hat, right? Can you hear any messy behaving in there? Okay, let's stop right here because look at this angle that he's got his guitar at. I mean, it's like this. It's just like a classical guitar player. Uh, that really high... But he's, he's got the strap on, and he's using his fingers. He's playing with his fingers. Jazz. This is jazz. You can decide how to hold your guitar and what you need to do. And try different things, okay? Don't just be stuck in one thing. Let's finish this. There you go. Now I'm going to go back to my chat and see what everybody's see if anybody is still here. <laughs> Let's see what anybody says. Santana. Santana. You know what? Uh, yes, I like Santana too. Richie Sambora, Earl King, David Gilmore. Yeah, David Gilmore is fun. Mark Knopfler for sure. Thanks, Dermot, for coming, and Bob and Dean and everybody else. Let's see, Nick. Hello, Nick. And uh, who else is here? Lisa was here. Um, there was somebody else that I said hi to. And I don't know where they went. Okay, well, anyway, thanks for coming. So I appreciate you guys being here and watching the video, going through it with me. The idea and the reason we looked at all those guitar players and different kinds of guitar players, some of the fastest guitar players that I know of are jazz guitar players, classical guitar players. 
Now, they also have very good technique. Now, rock guitar players are fine too. I mean, it's not a problem. Everybody's a little bit different, right? I mean, we could do this for hours. But thanks for coming along. If you have a, a favorite guitar player, put them in the chat so we can read it. And if you're looking at this later, I'd love to look at it. I look at the whole thing, unless there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, but on this particular video, there probably won't be hundreds. There'll just probably be enough that I can look at it and respond to you. Thanks for coming along. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you like what I do. I've got more stuff coming out. Too many other things going on and working on uh, my guitar course. So if you're going to be signing up with me either at Patreon or Subscribestar or get on my email list, which is lessonswithhal at gmail.com, and, uh, you know, give me a little uh, support at PayPal, I will put you on my email list and I will let you see my guitar course for no extra charge. Thank you very much for coming, and we're going to go. I'm going to go and hang out with my supporters. If you want to know how to do that, look in the description for links to see how you can become a supporter and you will be able to hang out with me after the live streams. Okay, we'll talk to you later. Thanks for coming. We'll see you guys. Bye.